Hi there, welcome to my home and my first ever product video review. I'm going to call this episode High Five for the Average Folks. Anyway, a couple reasons why I wanted to do this, uh, not the least of which is that we're a year into this crazy pandemic now. Here in Ontario, it's, oh uh, gosh, I lost track, week four, week five of a stay-at-home order. And like most folks, I'm looking for something new to do to entertain myself. So I thought I'd give this a go. We'll see how it turns out. The other reason is that I've been on the lookout for a couple speaker stands. And uh, what I ended up settling on, what I'm going to do, I thought might be helpful to you all. So I have two Play 5s, Sonos Play 5s, that I've lived happily on a bookshelf um, for a long time, a number of years. I've decided to move them now to the other end of the family room where they are now. They're sitting in a place of honor on a chair. Uh, so I got to put them on speaker stands. Now, I, I was shocked when I started shopping around that I could spend three, four, over $500 on speaker stands. That's crazy talk. Uh, don't get me wrong, I don't mind spending good money on quality stuff when it seems appropriate. I have a, a Rega Planer 8 turntable that's equipped with an Aria cartridge and the Rega Anya Phono Stage. It's, it's a beautiful turntable. It's, it, it's great. It's just sublime. If you remember back in the day, listening to records in the 70s, those turntables would snap, crackle, they would hiss, they'd do all kinds of crazy things. Totally different ball game now. Um, state of the art is just phenomenal. I'm lucky that I could afford quality stuff now and I don't mind doing that when it seems to make sense. And this turntable certainly seemed to make sense. But spending four or $500 on speaker stand doesn't make sense to me. What I ended up settling on was a Sanus model BF24-B1 speaker stand. There's two in the box here for $65, I might add. This is 24 inches tall for bookshelf speakers up to 20 pounds is what it says on the box. So let me talk about that for a minute. 24 inches tall. So it's gonna be two feet off the ground. Now, if you're one of those audiophiles that's in pursuit of a sonic ecstasy, you'll probably know that you need to put the tweeters at your ear level. So for me, I'm a tall guy. If I sit in a chair in my family room, my ear level is about 36 inches off the ground. Well, that's great. Um, but what happens when I slouch in the chair to get a little more comfortable? I'm not a in that sonic sweet spot anymore or more likely my wife gets fed up with me sitting in the chair listening to music and she tells me to get up and do the housework now i'm standing up or if we're here in the kitchen cooking uh, or entertaining house guests and we're standing up chatting you know the amount of times that my ear level is 36 inches off the ground is pretty rare actually so and not to mention that my 60 year old ears aren't going to tell the difference if the speakers are 36 inches off the ground, 40 inches off the ground, 24 inches off the ground. It's just not going to matter. I'm not going to tell the difference. Also, if you're familiar with Sonos, uh, the Sonos app has a beautiful way to calibrate these speakers where no matter how you situate them, you could put them in the corner of a room you know, up against two walls. Uh, you can put them on the floor, hang them upside down. Well, I'm exaggerating, of course, but you could sight them poorly, run the calibration, and it'll adjust the sonic performance of the speakers, and they end up sounding incredible anyway. So my goal, really, was to create something that's as inobtrusive as possible. If I were to put these speakers on 36 inch speaker stands, you know, you're gonna create this tower, this, uh, this, this shrine to the hi-fi gods that would look very, very obtrusive. Certainly your speakers would take center stage in your decor. This is our home. It's gotta look good. 
you know, mind you, if it was back in college co-ed back in the day, I'd just get some cinder blocks, stock them on top of each other, put the speakers on top of that, and who cares what it looks like. But here, it's got to look good as well as sound good. But importantly, it's got to look appropriate. So I figured 24 inches would be nice, keep them low. The other benefit with that is, if you can imagine, you know, the higher you get, the easier it is to tip them over, right? So you got these big, tall, three-foot towers. Um, you have to be very careful living with those things, you know? We don't have pets, but if the kids come over and they bring their dog, or we have unruly house guests, or the housekeeper bumps into them, here, We've had tremors in the middle of Lake Ontario, not frequent, but it happens if, uh, oh goodness gracious, something like that happens. It just worries me having some great big tower, two great big towers sitting in my family room um, with the speakers on prominent display. So I think what I settled on here, 24 inches tall, it's going to be perfect. Now, the reviews for this particular set of speaker stands... Uh, when I was researching, I, what I discovered is a lot of folks would say that it's a nice, simple speaker stand, looks good, um, and it's very appropriate for a small, lightweight bookshelf speaker. A lot of folks did say that it's, um, it's MDF, so if the screws would come loose over time, it'd be a little bit wobbly. A number of folks did say that they would never think about putting uh, a larger, heavier bookshelf speaker on top of these things. Um, so there's that. But I think what I plan to do with them, the modifications I'm going to make, are going to make them totally appropriate for these Play 5s. The Play 5s, are uh, they weigh in at 14 pounds each. They're about, I'm looking at them, I don't know the exact dimensions, maybe 14 inches wide, 7 inches deep. So it's a fairly significant weight that you're putting on the top of these things. Uh, I did see Sonos specific speaker stands, one set made by, made by Samus, that were $165 each. That's over 300 bucks for a pair. Other Sonos specific speaker stands were upwards of $500. One pair was $750. I mean, that's just crazy talk. I don't know. Anyway, I think I'm going to be happy with what I have here. Um, so, with that said, let's see what's in the box. Anyway, it's packaged nicely. Uh, I have a um, top plate. Kind of small. I'd say it's about 6 by 6 inches. It's half the reason why it wouldn't be appropriate for a Play 5. It is... Um, MDF, it's about oh, a little less than a half inch thick. It's not very thick and all the pieces are about the same width. Uh, it's black, it looks like it's covered in a powder coat. It's nice, it's a nice finish. I mean, it's, it's rough to the touch. It does look like there might be some lighter gray flecks in it, so it gives it a nice appearance. Uh, but anyway, it's powder coated, black, nothing special. So the uprights, I suppose that's what this is. You can see there's a radius. I don't know if you can see that well in the video, but there's a radius on the front. There's a groove in the back and there's, you put two together. I'll get another one out here. So you put two together so that the edge with the radius is at the front. You put it together in sort of a V. The groove in the back will accept. There's a plastic strip in here somewhere. Plastic strip goes into the groove in the back and that becomes your cable management area back there. Um, have some hardware, screws of course some black rubber pads that you put on the top light to provide some friction for the speaker. And these crazy things are the feet. They're shaped like cones. They come to a point at one end. Uh, they go into the base. 
I guess they're for carpet, to grip carpet. Some purists might say that it would also be good to use these on hardwood floor like we have here uh, to decouple any vibration. I don't know if that makes any difference really. I don't plan on using those, so I'll show you what I'm gonna do. So the base is larger. Uh, this would certainly give it some stability sitting on the floor. It looks like it's about 12 inches by 12 inches. It's rounded at the front. Uh, it's got a hole in the center. I guess you could use that as a cable management option. And then there's four screws to put the uprights in. So this would go something like this. All right. Pretty straightforward. Like I say, it looks got a nice finish it's okay the play fives are black so this would certainly match that color scheme I do plan on painting it though um, I'm gonna paint it Benjamin Moore simply white that's the color of our trim here I don't know is uh, three quarters of the homes in North America have Benjamin Moore simply white on the trim probably who knows anyway ours is so that's what I'm gonna end up painting with. The play fives are black sitting on white stands. I don't know, you might have an opinion on that. It's a matter of taste, I guess. You could paint it any color you want. If you get funky, you want to make it orange or, do, or leave it black, whatever. But I think painting it the same color as the trim is gonna help make them as inobtrusive as possible. And the black speaker on the white stand, I think will look fine. So, there's a whole other set in here to make two speaker stands. Now, what I plan to do to make this sturdy enough to hold the plate fives is a few things. So let, let me go over that. Um, I'll get the base out and the top. I'll close the box up. So anyway, I made a trip to the local hardware store, did some curbside shopping. I got two five pound barbell weights. These are particularly nice because they have cutouts, you know, that'll help with mounting. <clears throat> There's a hole in the middle and I'm going to mount this on the bottom of the bottom plate. The hole's actually the same size, so I'll line that up and that, like I say, that'll be a cable management option. You could either take, um, the cable out the back with at the bottom of that plastic strip that I mentioned or you could go through the hole and come out the very bottom with the cable lying on the floor anyway I'll mount that to the bottom of the bottom plate and that'll certainly give this some additional stability to help hold up that 14 pound speaker then this barbell weight was $7.99 cheap I got some rubber feet. These are leg tips, you know, you can put, the, put them on the bottom of a chair or a table leg. Anyway, I got eight of them for four bucks, I think, right? 36 inch dowel. So this is a five eighths dowel, five eighths tip. Put that on there. I'm gonna cut a little piece. I'll probably end up using eight inches of this 36 inches and make uh, little feet that will then mount on the bottom to help elevate this up off the floor so the barbell weight clears. And it'll provide some, you know, anti-slip on, on the hardwood floor. Went rummaged through my junk pile in the garage. I got some spare pine. That'll make a nice little collar underneath here. Miter the corners, it'll look beautiful. And, some brackets, shelf brackets. These are black. What I intend to do, actually before I get to this, I skip the part, let me point out that cut out a template. This is the footprint of the Play 5. You can see the sides are flared. It's got a radius on the front. So this is the exact footprint of a Play 5. I have some half inch MDF in the garage, enough to cut out two new top plates. 
All right, so then that'll make it a little more appropriate again for the play fives. And then on that top plate, put these brackets, two in the back, maybe two in the front, like so. They're nice and black, the, the speakers are black, so you probably won't, they won't stand out that much, but it'll provide some anchoring of sorts to a certain degree. I'll put some uh, thin piece of rubber on the face of these things, of course, so it doesn't scuff up the speaker and help grip it a little better. And then uh, lastly, I think that uh, if, with this being MDF, folks are saying in the reviews I read that it does tend to get shaky over time and the screws loosen, sometimes the screws will strip. And that makes sense, MDF will do that. Screwing in, uh, into MDF is uh, a bit of a challenge sometimes. So what you need to do is glue this stuff. So you get some tight bond glue, put it in all the joints. I'm sure it's gonna be fantastic. So having said that, the magic of the internet, I'll be back in a few minutes to show you the finished product. Welcome back. I hope I wasn't gone too long. Spent the last couple days putting the speaker stands together and uh, applying the modifications that I had outlined previously. This is the result. Uh, this is one of them. There's two, of course. I think it turned out pretty good. So let me just go over a few things with you uh, to remind you what I did to this. This is the Sanos 24-inch stand. I painted it in Benjamin Moore Simply White to match my trim. Originally it was black with a powder coat. Uh, I think it looks pretty good in white. I replaced the top plate. The original top plate that came with the speaker stand was too small. So I custom made one, uh, which is the exact footprint of the Sonos Play 5s. The actual assembly of the stand was pretty straightforward. There was only four screws. Uh, in the bottom, four screws in the top, and that was it. I did glue all the joints to make it more stable and, and sturdy. Um, I added the five pound barbell weight on the bottom, secured that, four rubber feet, and put a skirt around the bottom to cover all of that up. So the back, if you recall, I did mention that there's uh, a plastic insert that goes in the groove in the back of the two uprights. It was also black. I covered it in some uh, shelf lining paper, that's some contact shelf liner uh, to match white. It would have been, it's very thin plastic. It was also black, of course, but uh, it would have been very difficult to paint this white. So I thought the shelf liner paper was a good compromise and it turned out pretty good. So that goes in the groove back here. It is a little fiddly. I'm not going to put it in both grooves right now, but uh, that's the end result. So uh, that's it for now. I'm going to take another little break. I'm going to set them up in the listening area and I'll be back to show you what that looks like. Okay, here we go. Got the stands all set up, the play fives on top of them. I think they look pretty good. Actually, I think the... Uh, Black Play 5s on the white stands don't look too bad at all. So I'm going to sit back and spin some vinyl and enjoy my new speaker stands. I hope you enjoyed my video. Thanks for joining. See you later.